Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the slight delay. We've been having a major wind and uh, weather here. I lost power last night, so then I had to reboot everything up. And if you know, you know, inevitably, you will be in the middle of about 18,000 projects. The power goes out and you're like, what do I do now? So that should be a live for another rainy day of how Nikki has to pivot, move, keep going um, when I can process the whole thing and how I went about regrouping all of that. But right now we're going to be pressing uh, a clipboard. We haven't done a clipboard in a hot minute. And on my quest to use everything Chicago screws, we're going to do that. I'm going to grab the print out of the printer. I'm going to head over to the heat press. Let's move the cameras over so that you guys can see me over there. So good afternoon, everyone. We have the ladies in the comment section. We have Miss Jody and we have Miss Cheyenne. So if you have any questions, the ladies will be able to answer those for you. All right. So one thing you need to know about clipboards is that our clipboards are double sided. Let me just fix this because, you know, internet issues. And, and I want to tell you that my fit is brought to you in part by Maryland. Yep. If you're from Maryland, I am sporting the Maryland shirt. Yesterday was South Carolina. Today was Maryland. So I have those shirts. If you are looking to make sure that I represent your state, um, you can absolutely find me a shirt for your state or even make me one. I'll even take that too. But everybody always asks me how to rep their state. All right. So when you get your clipboard, we're going to use these two cameras right here. This is what your clipboard looks like, right? So it is double-sided. And what it is, I'm just using one that I had here. There is film on both sides. We're going to make sure we take that off. I am going to pull you all up on my comments just so that I can see you guys too, because, well, that's a beautiful thing. All right, let me find that live because doesn't everybody have a live? No, just me. Okay. All right. Let me find that there for you because it's here somewhere. Do, 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 there we go. There I am. All right. This way I can see you. All right. So a couple things. You're going to want to put your press at at least 385 for 65. You can go a little bit more than that. We want to take off the film off of this guy um, because there's both sides. So they try to protect it being that it is MDF. Now your print is up to you what you decide to put. I will tell you because it is MDF, you have to be careful um, because MDF can chip. All right, why is this not? Oh, you're gonna make a fool out of me, right? Oh, maybe that's I already peeled that side, my bad. Like, why isn't that coming off? It's because you already peeled it, silly. Okay, so double check and make sure if there's film on both sides. So we're gonna pull this back. Now, we have talked about in the past, when you are doing anything that's over six inches, when it comes to MDF, you need to, let me just make sure that is both sides. Um, I am going to give this a wipe down. You do have to make sure that you pre-press your image or your MDF. And the reason for that is because there could be moisture inside it. So we want to make sure that anything that's over six inches on MDF that we pre-press it. This is also a great opportunity to check your pressure on your press, right? So again, we like to make sure we protect investments around here. We use our butcher paper, fold it in half. Okay. Now here we go. Welcome to the clamshell world. So I can press it like this and try to get as much in there. I can also go in here with some cardstock, which I'm going to do to show I could show you that method because maybe I just want to have it go in like this, right? I want to just lay it here. I'm going to put some cardstock underneath this bottom front edge because I have a clamshell press. Clamshell press are known for having pressure issues on this front half of your press. So we're going to do that. All right, let's drop it like it's hot. I'm going to fix my pressure. Okay. All right. So we have got some firm pressure in here. I'm going to go get some cardstock. Give me just a hot second. I'm adding, I'm going to do a nice solid 20 second pre-press on this. Okay. Get some of that moisture out. Let's let that cool for a second. Let me go get that cardstock. 
Now, why do we use hard stock in a clamshell? Because there's ever so slightly a pressure issue and that can cause issues in your print. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our card stock, which I'm assuming you can still see me over here. We're going to take some card stock and I'm just going to fold it. There we go. I'm just going to fold it. There's one fold, two folds, three folds. Okay. And it doesn't have to be a lot. I really want it just to lay flat as I possibly can. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to slide this under this front edge. The reason being is because this touches back before this one. Now, you swing away users don't have that problem. Why is that? Because your whole thing hovers over the top of it and sets down evenly. Because we have a hinge on a clamshell, the clamshells need to have a little bit, little bit extra love, if you will. All right, so now that I know that that's what I'm going to have to do, let's get our print set up. This is a double-sided image, which means you're going to have to press sides different times. Okay. So let's lay this out. All right. I think that's what oh, we might, we might be cutting it close on my, my image here. Or see how close I can cut this. Cause I don't feel like reprinting it. I do not feel like reprinting this because you know, internet issues print issues. So I've literally made this beyond close. Hoo wee. Okay. Nothing like cutting it close on this one. I did the exact size. And this is why this is a good learning lesson right here. Why we add bleed because you're going to have heart failure if it doesn't line up because that's just how life is right? So this is going to be a great learning. This is a great learning moment for all of us to include the sassy one who, for some reason, did not measure her thing correctly. Okay. And because I am determined not to reprint this, let's see if I've got, oh, she's going to be cutting it close, but you know what? It looks like I gave myself just the most minimal amount of lovins here. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Let's see what we got on this side. Do I got stuff on this side? I do. Let's shift this over too, because it looks like I can shift it. Let's get this centered first. And it looks like I gave myself at least the least amount of bleed I could possibly give myself, right? So do you want a generous bleed? Yes, but you don't want a bleed too that is so large that you're going to misalign where wording may be, um, where the design may be. So you kind of want a nice bleed, but one that leaves a little room for error, right? So this one, this one be close, okay? Th th this one was a close bleed. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that there's a little bit on this. Did I bring it all the way down there? Okay. Do I still... Uh... God, this is giving me anxiety. This is why we do this, right? It's giving everybody else anxiety too. And Nikki, I would just reprint it. You're right. Normally I would, but you know what? Normally you guys are not all live either. Okay. Let's scoot this down. I can see this bottom half much better. This is great learning opportunity, but this is why we talk about adding a little bit of a bleed more than what Nikki has just added to her design. And I could tell you my entire back office is going, Nick, just reprint it. Just reprint it. Nope. Nope. We've committed. We have committed. All right. Here we go. Whoo boy. So great learning opportunity here of why we do what we do. So we are going to flip this over. All right. I'm also going to add in my butcher, my little um, card stock thing. We're going to flip side. We're going to flip this over. I know my pressure is pretty good without having to do the, um, the cardboard, but the cardboard is just like some extra security, if you will, to make sure I'm having an anxiety attack secretly. Um, actually not secretly. I'm letting you enjoy this. Just drop it. Oh boy. Okay. So having that generous bleed and what I mean by generous bleed, if something is 12 inches wide, 
right? You want to make your bleed at least 0.25. If you go up to 0.5, that's way too big. You're going to have way too much room for error. Um, if you do what I believe that I did was 0.125, it's a little too tight. You're, you're making that bleed just a little bit too tight. So anything that is over six, eight inches, I will add a 0.25 to the bleed space. It gives me enough to play around with, but not enough to where I'm going to screw this up. Whereas if it's less than the six inches, it's about 0.125. All right. And that's because it's a smaller item. You have a little bit more room um, to kind of work with. Everything looks beautiful in that. So for an example, I was doing um, name tags last night. The name tags were one, one by threes. My bleed space for those was, that was not good. Um, my bleed space for those was 3.13. Did you see how I just opened that? It stuck to the top because I didn't, I just opened it up. So now what that means is I have a real big shot of this being off gas, laid down funny, but I can see there's wrinkles in my paper. Why is that? There's a pressure issue here. So I am not even going to move this. I am literally going to tighten this down. I know that I have, I'm going to add a little bit more pressure and I'm going to see if I can't save that side of the image, right? So you want to add firm pressure to this, add the firm pressure. Um, don't go winging this open because what's happening is when I go to wing that open, that paper's going to come up and it's going to come right back down and it can off gas and create some shadowing. All right. So I'm hoping that I just didn't do that. But you know what? This is a part of the process. Like I said, we haven't done clipboards in a hot minute. And I like to work through the process with all of you. I like you to hear basically what's in my head of going, oh, what the heck are you doing, Nikki? Right. These are the things you have to remember. So when you're writing your notes for your clipboard, you want at least a decent sized bleed. <coughs> you want a decent sized bleed so that you can make sure that your image holds, please. <coughs> Why is it I got to have a tickle in my throat now? Um, that you have a decent sized bleed, but nothing that's overly too big. Now, this is how I should have opened it. Let's see. I have no wrinkles in my image, so I'm praying that I did this right. I'm going to go peek under the hood. So far, it looks good. We're just going to pull it. Pull it. Just pull it. Whoo, she did it. Okay, now we're going to do this the second side. Now, do you have to let this cool? You don't, but I will tell you, your investment pieces here are going to love you if you do. All right, use your gloves. So she pressed absolutely gorgeous. And that was even going with the extra pressure. So the extra pressure, making sure it's firm, praying that I lined this up perfectly. Again, that extra little bleed space would have done me a whole lot of good. So back to that bleed comment that I was making. When something is pressed or is, is an image of, let's say, three by one being really small, you're going to want to make your image 3.125 by 1.125. Okay. For anything that's over six inches, six to eight inches in, in height, um, I like to use 0.25 because this was caught in the close. All right. Why does it make a difference as it gets larger? That's a great question. I can't even answer that. Um, but it does. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put some new butcher paper down. I'm still gonna use my cardstock, and I'll let this cool for a hot second. All right, hello to everybody in the comment section. Sorry, I don't re typically read the comments when I am doing a live. So there are ladies in the comment section who will be able to help you now. I want to make sure that I line this up correctly. Again, we're going to fight with that same thing because, well, Nikki didn't give herself enough bleed. So we are going to make sure she's lined up to the best of my abilities. Because is anybody else having anxiety while I do this? No, just me? Okay. All right. I'm going to put some tape in this corner. I'm going to put some tape in this corner. 
Now I'm going to rotate it around and see if I can't put some tape somewhere else so that it doesn't move right here. And we're going to go right there. Okay. Slide this off for a second because she is hot. Slide that under there. Whoo. Fingertips. Okay. Take this, flip it over, line it up. All right. I will slide the whole thing. I just want to be able to fold my paper. Okay. So again, good bleed space, unlike Nikki. Let's not be Nikki, okay? Because as much as y'all want to be Nikki, let's not be Nikki right now, okay? So here we go. Firm pressure. I have a 385 for 60 seconds right now. But you want to do not necessarily squish the heck out of me pressure. You want to do pressure. We will go through all of this in one second. There we go. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So one of the things that you can sometimes do if you've picked it up too fast, yes, you might get some off gassing, um, shadowing, if you will, a reprint, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. It's just you messed it up, right? If you, so when you open this, you want to open it up slowly. Let's say you look at it, you can see some rippling in your paper. It looks like modeling in your paper. Um, it's not flat, flat and smooth, right? You can sometimes, if you've opened this up slowly, do what I did and repress it. Peek under the hood, see what it looks like. You could typically tell without even moving the paper if there's some modeling on that paper, some ripple marks, right? Because it means it didn't get a full connection of paper from print to substrate, right? There are some waves in it, if you will. You can sometimes go in and repress it. It's just learning your product and how to um, know these things if you can get away with it. We're gonna open this up slowly because she is very firm on the pressure. Okay. This has some nice press. I don't see any of the weird issues that I may see in a print. So I'm gonna peek under this hood. I'm gonna loosen my tape. Okay, let's see. If I'm going to see something, I'm going to see it long in this section. Why will I see in that section? Because this is where my pressure issues are going to happen. Okay. The pressure issues are going to happen when you have them on this end of your image versus if you have it down here for clamshell users only. Now, if you're a swing away user and you see that again, you could still use the repress method if you need to, but it just depends on, there we go. It just depends on exactly what it is you're pressing. Does it work for everybody? Nope. It's called learning and adjusting and pivoting all of that. Okay. So we want to let this completely cool off. She'd be gorgeous. Look at those colors. Let's peep the colors. Why this? There you go. We're actually going to be doing slates tomorrow, Emily. We're going to be talking about slates and what that looks like, what those ripples are. It means you have to add a little bit more pressure. And I also press my slates upside down. It was something that I learned from Frank from Johnson Plastics, who's like, Nikki, don't do it that way. Flip it upside down. And that's how we're going to do it tomorrow. Um, I'm going to press it both ways for you guys. Tomorrow's live will be a little bit longer. Um, and the reason for that is because slates take a little bit longer. All right, I'm going to try to cool this down a little bit quicker. <laughs> Quiet down. She's be warm. Okay, so on my quest of being able to use Chicago screws, ooh, she's still hot, okay? I want to use, there's two different sizes of Chicago screws. Now, I could tell you that the four millimeter do fit in these ones, but I'm going to see if I can't use these ones because the, the screw part on that are a little bit on the chunky side or a little bit small side. So give me one second and let's see if we can make sure we muster this. Why am I going to use a Chicago screw your ass? Because I, I'm tired of trying to hammer these suckers in. So let's see if I can get this. Will this fit through this hole? That's another question. 
Well, no, it can't. Okay, so we do have to use the four mil. Let's go back to this one. These ones I do know fit, okay? All right, first things first, you want two different ends of this. Pop it in, I do one side at a time, okay? You're gonna pop this in, you're gonna flip it around town. Hold your finger there. Move it around town. Okay, you can finger tighten them for right at the moment so that it gets where it needs to be. Get your little tiny screw here. Okay, and then we're gonna do the other side, don't worry. It'll be a little loose at the moment until we get it all lined up. And now I don't have to hammer it and it doesn't look weird and it doesn't look buckled and, oh, come on, don't fall out on me. All right, this is my quest this year to use these Chicago screws on just about every project that I have to put together. Why is that? Well, because I'm tired of gluing. I'm tired of all of that. So I'm trying to do as many projects as I can. We can't make this stuff up today. Okay, stay. My facial expressions today have got to be on point. I just need you to know that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten these down. And sometimes you have to start and stop them because it's you're cross-threading them. I'm going to hold this up where I can see what I'm doing. Come on. Set in there nice. Behave. Fine. Don't behave. I don't care. There we go. I will say that I, these particular Chicago screws, it's the, I don't like the screwdriver for this. The screwdriver drives me nuts. And I just did this prior to class too. So somewhere along the line, I have cross threaded this. We don't want to be doing that. So we're just going to put in a new one end because this thing is just not playing fair right at the moment. So what I like to do typically is test them. What I didn't do was, or what I did do was put it back all in the bag. I was like, Oh, you know, this should be. Mm -hmm. Yep. There we go. See, you just, sometimes you have to just work with it. Go in here, tighten them all down. There you go. Now you have this. What you can do if you don't want people to um, be able to unscrew these, you're still going to want to go in and tighten this down a little bit. Um, what I can, what I want to do is try to see if I can't get this to tighten up. That didn't work. Um, you can tighten these down a little bit. You can also super glue them in if you want so people can't um, unscrew them. I would get a different screwdriver too because this screwdriver is driving me insane right at the moment because it's too little for my fingers and I got little fingers. Anywho, but that's what you want. What size you want, you're going to ask me. I know you're going to ask me this. So you basically want the one eighth inch, I'm sorry, the eighth inch. You want the eighth inch Chicago screw dimensions. Um, their four millimeters are the size that you want for this particular one. The four millimeters is the size of the um, male end of it. So that's why you need that in order to fit through these holes. But let's peep this. Gorgeous, right? Looks professional. I didn't have to hammer it. I'm all for it. I'm here for it. All right, let's go over the details of a clipboard because there was a lot to unpack. There's some things you learned along the way. So when you're doing a clipboard, it is double-sided. You want to make sure you take the film off of both sides, right? Let's flip the camera. You want to take the film off of both sides of it. If you want to use the Chicago screws, you're going to want to use eighth inch, four millimeter ones to, in order to put them on your um, clipboard. Can you use the hammer method with the little stuff that it comes with? Absolutely, you can. Have fun. I don't care. Um, let's talk about bleed space. I made a very, very tight bleed space. Well, yes, she is honest to God perfect. I was just barely on the edge. Like, I have no white here. Look, Mom, no white. Okay? So, why you want to have a little bit more of a bleed space? If your image is, for this uh, tutorial, it is a 12 and a half 
by nine, a little over nine. So you want to add a 0.25 to whatever your dimensions are. So if it is a 12 and a half, you want to go 12.75. If it's nine, you want to go 9.5. Two five. Okay. You want to add, especially on the cutting or on the clipboards, same holds true for cutting boards as well. Anything that's over six to eight inches, you want to go up a little bit. Anything that's below the six to eight inches, you're going to want to play with that, but it's typically one point point one two five is what you add to that. Most people don't even tell you that. So again, name tags, I said, I did a, that are three by one. I did a bleed space of three 0.125 by 1.125. Okay. If that were a larger one, I would go to adding a 0.25 to that size. Hopefully that makes more sense to your brain. Then this way you're going, okay, I don't know how big to make that bleed. All right. And that's just the typical stuff that I use when I'm making all the designs or all the templates for you guys. That's all I'm doing is I'm adding something a little extra to the safe space, the cut space, right? That's the, that's the size that they're cutting it at. You want to go slightly beyond. Why is that important? That is because you guys are going to slide things, but you don't want it so big. You don't want to add a 0.5 to it because it's too big. And I could have shifted that either way. If it wasn't completely centered, this is making it so you can still center it correctly and everything lines up the way it needs to. That's why your bleed space just can't be too far. You're going to want to pre-press these for at least 20 seconds um, because again, they are lar on the larger size. And so you want to pre-press these for a good solid 20 seconds. Do you have to pre-press both sides? No, just one side. Can you? Yes. It may bow a little if you only do one side, but again, you're going to be pressing both sides of this. For your clamshell users, we definitely want to get our card stock. Card stock, you want to slide in under that front edge underneath your butcher paper. So this goes down first, your butcher paper, then you want to put your substrate and then your image on top of that. Some more butcher paper. That is your sublimation burrito. And you want to put that in there. This helps with pressure issues. If you see any more sort of like waving or modeling ripples in your design, when you are doing this, right, you want to open this ever so slightly. I'm not going to bring it all the way down. You want to gently, I mean, because you're going to put some serious firm pressure on this, right? You're not going to put squish the heck out of me, but nice firm pressure. It creates an even contact when you do that because we have the cardboard under the front. We will get some firm pressure. But if you open this up and you pull back that top paper, right, your butcher paper, and you see some modeling, don't move it. Don't move it. You can already see that there's going to be some issues. Your paper should be completely flat on up against this if it is correct. That's how you're going to kind of judge that it, you did a really good press, right? So then what you're going to do is you're going to lay it, heat press it back down because you didn't move your, your item. Heat press it back down for the additional time because you want to work out those waves. You might want to tighten your pressure up ever so slightly because that means there it's not getting enough contact. So if you see some rippling in here, Go ahead and give it a quarter turn to almost a half turn um, on your press and then drop it down again. Because even though it is MDF, you're taking out the pressure, it will flatten a little too. So what your initial press on um, your MDF, you might have to tighten it a little bit after it's been pressed. So that's what that means, what that modeling means is you're not getting enough contact in there and you might just have to tighten up your press just a little and then cook it again and see, make sure you get that modeling out of the way. All right. That is important when you're doing this. Again, when you're putting in this, you want to put your, your, especially your clamshell users, actually only for your clamshell users, you want to put your cardboard in under this side, not this side. Could you do the backside? You could, but it's still going to create a weird, um, pressure issue. So put it under this front half and it doesn't have to be a lot. It's just a piece of cardstock that's folded over three times. That is it. So you pre-press it. You make sure that you have nice solid contact. You make sure you have firm pressure on this and then you let it cool down in between enough to where you can handle it. These guys get very hot almost 400 degrees. You cannot be picking these up with your bare fingers. Make sure you wear gloves 
You want to make sure too that you let it cool down a little bit, handle it, make sure your bleed space, and you should be ready to rock and roll. Like I said, I did Chicago screws on this. You could tighten it down by adding some Loctite, um, super glue. Once you do put these down so that they do not come off. All right. And you don't want them to be able to take them off. That's a great alternative to using the hammered method. That's it for now. I hope you guys learned something along the way, like Nikki's anxiety of not having a good enough bleed. But you know what? We worked through the issues and how you can work through them too. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about slates. That is probably the one most sought after items you guys want to know. They're great for memorials. They're great for weddings. They're great for whatever you want to put on them. They absolutely sub gorgeous. So that should be my live tomorrow. I'm going to go find my slates because I've packed them up somewhere. If I can't seem to find them, don't worry. We'll doing slates. It just might have to wait till next week. Um, until next time, I'll see you guys all real soon. You know where on that flip side.